For the last 12 months, they've traveled from arena to arena, earning a little here and a little there, cutting their way to Amarillo, Texas. Now the top 50 money earners have been cut down to 15. Will Bob's Hickory Rio and Boyd Rice continue their success after a heartbreaking start to the competition? When the dust settles, only one will be called world champion. We'll find out who that is next. The temperature's a little chilly outside, but the action about to heat up inside. Welcome to AQHA's Best of the West coverage of the 2005 National Cutting Horse Association World Finals. Hi everybody, I'm Jeff Metters, with me Phil Rapp, one of the NCHA's very best, in fact, Phil number two on the all-time NCHA money list. Two divisions in Amarillo, the Open and the Non-Pro. We're going to focus on the Open. What is an Open competitor? An Open competitor is a professional that makes their living training these cutting horses. It's their job to go out there and show these horses to the best of their ability. They're paid to do this. They live with these horses. They train these horses. They, they know these horses inside and out. And you're going to be able to watch the best of the best tonight. Of course, we're into 2006, but this is for the 2005 World Championship. To explain that, here's Jennifer Reynolds. The title of 2005 NCHA World Champion goes to the horse that's earned the most money during the course of the past year. Bob's Hickory Rio has already earned more than $8,600 here in the preliminary goes of this competition. He's ridden by professional rider Boyd Rice. All of that is at least some comfort to the family of owner James Kenny. He's a legendary horseman who passed away at the age of 91 just a few days before this competition began. So a good performance here would certainly be meaningful to the family. First exhibitor will be Seth Kirshner. He's riding Style and Barbie and actually when it comes to the open competition here in the NCHA World Finals, it's the horse that is declared world champion. And Phil, being first, is that a curse or a blessing? Many times it's a curse. Uh, you'll see the cattle are very unpredictable when you're early in. Uh, they're sometimes not settled in. They're not used to the, to the horse actually going in there and, and uh, making the fast moves that a horse has to make to challenge the cow and keep the cow from returning back to the herd. Let's see what Seth does. Looks like he's got a black cow he's picked out and uh, see how he starts his run. And that first cow, really so important, isn't it, to set the tone for, for your two and a half minutes? That's right. You're always setting the table for what happens. He had a little miss right there. See how this cow's giving him a little challenge. A lot of times you see the early in a bunch, the cattle won't challenge the horse as they will later on in the bunch. They, they still want to run around to the arena and, and check things out. One of the arts of cutting really isn't what happens in the arena. It's happening while they settle the herd as you guys sit up there and make notes and name these cows and try to get a game plan and that's uh you know it's just kind of a mystery and you don't really know how the cow is going to unfold until you drop your hand and you commit exactly right it's a great unknown you'll see a cow that behaves great and she'll go out there and, and either stand still or maybe run right over the top of you another cow that uh, maybe was a little uh, frightened at first uh, acted a little uh, ill-tempered go out there and be the best cow cut in that herd Seth going a little deeper into the herd this time. I'm actually going to pick a cow right off the back fence. Right. He brought this red baldy off the back fence, put himself in a credit earning position right there. That's a high degree of diff difficulty cut. Um, a good little red baldy. Let's see if it gives him a challenge. The red baldy starting out well. Now it's kind of it's starting to work the turn back guys a little bit. And this happens so many times when you're early in the bunch, it's hard to get a cow that'll stay in the middle of the pen and challenge the horse. You know, this cow's running from side to side. There's an old saying in cutting, all the gold is found in the middle of the pen. And if you're Seth, you're just kind of waiting for an opportunity to get off, and that's what he does right that's there. Right. But not a whole lot of challenge there from the second cow. And no. you can see the clock's ticking, 20 seconds. Going to just try to peel one off here and finish working. That's what Seth's doing right now. Is uh, When you're first, everything's uh, theoretically fresh. He went in there and found this black cow. This is the best cow that he's cut right here. Uh, trying to finish his run up, six, seven seconds. Don't make any major mistakes. So Seth finishes working. Not a lot to show for his effort, though. 2.06 is the score. And now, Phil, let's talk about the rules of the game. You've got two and a half minutes to go in there and basically cut two or three cows out. Uh, there's penalties for reining your horse, and you don't want to have a major penalty like losing a cow. And that takes us right into Rio CD and Lawson Hadlock. Rio uh, CD is a, is a good horse here. He's shown well all week. Uh, Lawson's a, a, a good cowboy from the Utah area. Uh, always a formidable competitor. 
he'll come back in here. He'll have something picked out, as you talked about watching the cattle. We uh, we spend many hours watching these cows uh, while they're being settled to, to see which one's going to be the best cow, and so we can identify them late in the bunch as well. Awesome. And from a judge's standpoint, you know, once the once the horse crosses the timeline, you're actually judging the horse from that point on. Exactly. Kind of his temperament, how well he works in the herd, and how well he responds to the rider. Exactly. You always want to see a willing horse. You want to see a horse that uses their ears, like this horse here. And you also want to see a pretty horse and a pretty moving horse. It's something with some eye appeal. And we talked about the first cow setting the tone in Lawson. I, I don't think he would uh, trade this cow for any other. No, th this has been a this is an awful good cow. You can see that that cow challenged the horse. Not too difficult, but yet uh, you know it let the horse expose itself uh, in its uh, high points. Good start for Lawson Hadlock as he digs back into the herd looking for cow number right. two. And you'll see these two people on the uh, on the corners. They're called herd holders, and those herd holders are there to keep the, the herd in in check. And they're also there to kind of help the rider identify the certain cow that they are looking for. Uh, my herd holders are usually sitting there uh, helping me identify the cow so that we know when we go in there what which uh, three or four cows that we're going to try to shoot for and cut. So with the herd holders and the turn back men, it, al it right. almost makes it a team event. It is. This is the only team uh, sport in the world. Uh, where your fellow competitors are out there helping you uh, beat them. Uh, you know, everything else is kind of a, a, a sport where it's one-on-one. -on -one. This is one-on-one, -on -one, but you've got to have four helpers with you. And Lawson, again, doing a good job of oh, keeping this yeah. cow right in the middle. This little black line-faced cow is really giving him a good challenge, staying in the middle of the pen right there. Lawson's horse is working good. He's going to get a good score out of this. So two very good cows for Lawson Hadlock, and now he just wants to Put the icing on the cake, so go. to speak. and Made a good chip again on another black, white face cow. And he's finishing up. Eight seconds. Good challenge. Horse has got a good eye appeal. Here you're finishing up. This ought to be a good score, I think. Lawson Hadlock doing what he needs to do, and it is a great score. One more look kind of at some of the best action that he had in this run. You see how bright this horse is. This horse is trying to anticipate that cow's move, but yet he's trying to tell that cow, hey, you're not going to go past me. He's going to open the door up a little bit and close it real quick. That second cow, one of the keys to Lawson Hadlock's run on Rio CD and the judges. Well, they took note and scored him very well as Lawson Hadlock takes the lead. 220 early on. Can they catch him in Amarillo, Texas? More from the NCHA World Finals when we come back. Back in Amarillo, Texas, the NCHA World Finals, the open competition, and that is Donald O'Brien on Smart Play Who, trying to catch Lawson Hadlock, who has the early lead with that 220. All right, well, Don, Donnie's in here looking for a cow. I think he's got one uh, identified right here, a little black cow with some white specks over its eye. Uh, you know, as you can see, he's, he's uh, kind of committing to this cow. Uh, this is one that he's chosen with his helpers. There he goes, it's his cow, and off he goes. They're going to try to put the cattle up. His hands down, off to work. Well, seasoned horses, and you see somebody come in and put a 220 on the board. How does that change your game plan early on? Well, I, you've got to assess what, you, what you're riding, and you've also got to assess the cattle that you can cut. Obviously, you're always trying to go for uh, uh, a high score and, and a victory, but you also want to go in there and try to get the best check that you can. This cow here was going to, uh, took him back into the corner. It wasn't a major penalty, but it didn't help uh, the run in, in earning any credit. Career earnings for Smart Play Who, about $81,000 for O'Brien. Pretty good. Almost $600,000 for him. He'd like to add to that right here. And a great shot right there. As you can see what the what the cutter sees as he digs a little deeper right. into that herd. They always say that the, the cutter has the best seat in the house. Uh, he sees it all and gets to feel it all right there. Donnie cut a nice little Brangus uh, heifer and uh, hoping it'll come back here and challenge him. Play Who's been, a, I think, a very active horse this year, very busy horse competing in several different classes. Uh, Donnie's uh, done well in the uh, novice as well uh, this year. I believe he's the world champion in the, uh, the 10,000 novice horse class. Uh, Donnie's just a great competitor. Uh, and if he's not out there showing, he's out there helping you try to beat the score that he posted. Not a bad second cow there for Donnie. And we're going to talk a lot about money because that's what decides the world championship. But miles play a big part in that too to haul oh. for the world championship you're going to see a lot of the united states you're going to see a lot of the united states you're going to see donnie i believe is from missouri but you're also going to be you're going to cut in uh, tennessee you're going to cut in mississippi texas of course oklahoma california oregon uh, nevada uh, if you're going to haul for the world championship you're going to go to several of the states um, that have cuttings 
Well, 210 is considered an average score, and O'Brien a little bit better than that. Kind of in need of uh, some cows with a little bit more electricity. Well, that one cow, the first cow that he cut, uh, almost had a little too much electricity and ran back in the corner. And just, it wasn't a very pretty uh, part of the cutting horse run and kept him from getting over, uh, you know, basically a 71. So Lawson Hadlock still comfortable in the lead with that 220. For Donnie O'Brien, going to have to settle now for a 213. Not bad for his work here in Amarillo. Bruce Marine will be next to go. I'm on a safari is the horse. And he has been scouting these cows, and we'll see if he can put those cows into play right here. That's right. Bruce is a formidable competitor. He goes out there, and, and uh, he's originally from Illinois. Oh, he made a... a, a uh, fast decision to cut this little smoky gray cow. It almost uh, took him out of the cutting, but it worked out all right. That might not help too well on the on the scoring as far as uh, pretty herd work, but uh, he got it in play. Here it goes. This horse here has been doing double duty this week too. I think he's been showing in the non-pro as well with his owner. Well, it's a good cow though. I can see why Bruce wanted to cut it. And you can see the clock still at a minute 40 for him, so didn't spend too much time on that first cow. No. Now you can kind of expect him to come back and get a little deeper into the herd, give the judges a chance to check out this horse's demeanor while he's at work and makes a liar out of me, chips yeah. another one off here pretty quick. Well, he's going right to it. There's another black baldy. Bruce, you know, he's an aggressive cutter. He, wants to, he, he knows what he wants to cut, and he's going to go in there and cut it. Here we go. This is a good cow. This is a good horse. Been marking well in the go-arounds here. A lot of eye appeal. Quick horse. Cow's challenging very hard. Bruce is holding in there. He's starting a good run. I don't know what they're going to do with the first cut, but uh, this second cow right here is uh, racking the points up for him. I'm on a safari. He's had a very good career, $172,000 in career earnings. Bruce over the half million dollar mark for himself and staying on the second cow for quite a while. That's right. Yeah, I think he's worked this cow well over 30 seconds. If you work a cow 50 to 18 seconds, uh, you've, you've worked it for a, a good amount of time. Anything over that's uh, exceptional. Oh, and the cow's had enough, and a lot of times that happens. He didn't have a penalty right there, but it really took away from the run content uh, and close to having a back fence, which is if the uh, anything inside the red marker stops the cow, that's a three-point penalty. So time may be a little bit of an issue right here for Bruce as he's trying to get that third cow rather quickly. All right, and as you see it, well, he's got 15 seconds left. He's on the little uh, Hereford cow. Uh, you know, Bruce has had some great things in the run, and he's also had a few things near disasters. And his cow ran away from him. He's trying to do what he can. It's that, that's happens with cutting. You know, a lot of unpredictability. Waiting for the horn, and he had some problems. The lone highlight for him, no doubt, the first cow. Not a great score, 210, but he did have a good finals. Jennifer caught up with Bruce. Our goal was, was to come here and be in the top 20 or within striking distance. And I came in 17th, and thus far I'm sitting 10th. So I'm, I've been very pleased. He's a great horse. The horse in the lead right now is Rio CD. Lawson Hadlock is the rider. This is highbrow Sally Cat. Matt Sargood is the rider, and he's already into the herd and got a beeline on that first cow. All right, he's out there. He's going to cut this little uh, one of these black cows right here that uh, he's picked out. Matt's an Australian uh, by uh, birth. He lives in California with his wife and, and two children. I believe they're expecting their third, but Matt's a good uh, uh, cutting horse trainer out there in California. Hall's out there in the uh, novice in the open. Um, somebody to beat out there in California. He's made a good choice right here with this little uh, woolly black cow. The little horse uh, is kind of rolling up a little bit on him. Uh, that's not going to help too much with the score, but he's going to go in there and try to cut a better cow. Try to build on that first cow somewhat. And is it overwhelming? You know, you know, in, a, in an event this big, you can see the size of the herd. It's pretty large. Is it uh, tough to, to, to make your mind up on which cows you want? It, it really is. Uh, and that's, again, when you talked about being a curse being first, is you should have so many choices to choose from, it's kind of hard to narrow it down to two or three cows. When it's later in there, like this little yellow cow was one of his picks, and it, it uh, almost took him out of the cutting. Um, you know, ducking and dodging like that. But when you're later on in the bunch, there's usually only four or five cows that you really feel comfortable with. That's a cow right there that gets your heart rate up, isn't Oh, it, it? did. Yeah, <laughs> get your heart rate up and takes the score down. Well, he finally managed to get loose from that cow, and he's got plenty of time as he starts to fish for cow number three. Yeah, uh, he's he now, 
<clears throat> sometimes you you kill a little time here as you see the clock 42 seconds that's too much time to be cutting uh, your third cow uh, you've got to work your third cow to the whistle uh, you know he wants to cut his cow 25 seconds probably more like 20 seconds he's down 30 you're gonna see him cut it a little under 30 seconds so good Brangus cow right here he's gonna give a good challenge he knows he's had a few uh, penalty points with misses so he's gonna try to do his best to make up what ground he can whether it's a turn back man or, or a herd holder at that stage they're giving you cues on time, aren't they? Yes, they are. Uh, you know, that's part of the job and unwritten rules to say, hey, you know, you've got 30 seconds, 45 seconds. The rider can see that, but sometimes their nerves uh, are going such that uh, they can't uh, see it, but they can hear it much better. Buzzer finally sounding for Highbrow Sally Cat and Matt Sargood. Their score, not too bad. 208, but not quite in the category of Rio CD and Lawson Hadlock. They are still in control with a 220. Smart play who and Donnie O'Brien in second at a 213, but the best is yet to come. The favorite, Bob's Hickory Rio and Boyd Rice are getting ready. More action from the NCHA World Finals coming up. Glad you're with us in Amarillo, Texas. Horse TV's coverage of the 2005 NCHA World Finals Alan Crouch next in the herd. Showbiz Pep is the horse. As you can see, Alan's entering the herd there looking for that cow. You can see Donnie O'Brien. We watched him earlier, and he's in there showing, uh, showing Alan which cow uh, you know, that he wants, uh, wants to cut. He's saying maybe this cow felt good to him, but he didn't have an opportunity to cut it. Or he's saying, Alan, I cut that cow and don't cut it. Career earnings for Showbiz Pep, $125,000. For Alan Crouch, closing in on a million dollars, 830000 in his career. Off to a pretty good start here with the first cow. Yeah, this is a good cow, a little black star-headed cow. Good challenge right there. Nice horse, and Alan's a great competitor. And he got off there a little quick. It's ideal to get off in the center of the pen, although you want to get off the cow wherever it, uh, it allows you to. But to get those big, high scores, you want to get off in the middle of the arena. That cow have a little too much action? As it, it, it did. You, it, you take so many chances, and you finally <laughs> figure, well, you know, now's as good a time as any You to, better to get off out. sometimes. That's right. Save your life sometimes. And that cow was pretty quick and pretty squirty. And for Allen, pretty deep cut right here as he right. digs back into the herd. And that's showing the horse. Uh, when you're trying to find a cow, but it's also showing the horse's aptitude to go through there and uh, uh, cut a cow very quiet and uh, not be a disturbance to the herd. And also, as you've touched on a little bit earlier in the show, it's you know time management. That's a big part of it, too. Big part of cutting, time management. You don't want to be held with too much or too little time at the end. Here's a cow, right? See how playful this cow is? This cow wants to work this horse. It's got some respect for the horse, but, uh, but yet it's some, uh, it, it wants to challenge that horse to try to get back there. Great cow right there. That's a money-earning cow right there. A little hesitation in there. That kind of gets yep. the crowd back into things. And for Allen? So he's got 40 seconds, so he's got plenty of time to go in there, uh, kind of uh, calm his nerves for a minute, and go in there and find that third cow that he wants to finish the run up strong. Not a bad start with that first cow. Made a little hay with cow number two, and as you said, chance to leave a nice impression in the judge's mind right. here with his third and final cow. And it's always better to finish up strong than it is uh, to finish up with a penalty. Now this cow here, see this cow doesn't have any honor to the horse. Uh, this cow, you know, was trying to get back to the herd, but not much respect. Here it goes, start working him, but kind of numb. He's got eight seconds left to see how Allen finishes up. Nice, nice horse, though. And Allen did a nice job of showing him, too. For Allen Crouch and Showbiz Pep, giving the crowd something to cheer about here. And, you know, this horse, when he has the right cow, can put some big numbers on the board. Oh, he sure can. You know, this horse is, works low to the ground, uses his ears, has a very appealing style, uh, and, and a nice horse. And this is the way you want a cutting horse to be right here, a good stopper. Alan, he's happy with the, that he's finished up. He's had a long year. All smiles with that 215 and a half. Here comes a legend, Hall of Famer, Terry Riddle riding in. Yes, indeed. Terry, you know, he's... Uh, He's been training cutting horses for several years. Uh, you know, uh, he was a master's champion. He is a, a great competitor uh, and a great person. Trained and showed so many great horses. This horse is uh, up in this cow here. That sometimes happens, those old numb cows right there, and they just, they don't respect the horse. But Terry's trained so many great horses, trained this horse's sire, dam, uh, grand dam. Really neat family, the Riddles. His brother's gonna be, uh, President of the National Cutting Horse Association, I believe, next year, Bill Riddle. 
Bill has a pretty good resume himself. Young yeah. Guns Babe is the horse here for Terry. And, well, you hate to, to have a glitch or two right at the start of your run. It kind of takes some of the air out of it, doesn't it? It, it does. Uh, you know, it's the finals, and you go in there, and, and you keep showing your horse, and you try to do the best. Uh, sometimes as a competitor to help your fellow competitors, you don't want to go in there and cut, uh, you know, maybe the, the prize stock. Uh, in the herd because, uh, you know, you want to let somebody else have their chances. You wish that they would do that for you. Uh, so Terry's just going in there and trying to cut a, cut a cow that's uh, you know, going to let him finish up and, and continue to show his horse, but maybe not the best uh, cow left in the herd. Terry enjoys his ranching, too, up there in Oklahoma. He's, uh, I think he's got up to 800 or 1,000 mother cows now, so he spends a good bit of, uh, bit of his time uh, taking care of the cows. Not sure you have time to do anything else when you have that many cows. That's a, <laughs> he still can train a pretty good horse. That's a full-time job. 43 uh, seconds to go for him. Uh, he's a legend. I tell you, I've got a lot of respect for Mr. Riddle. He's, uh, he's trained some great ones. They have a pretty good cutting down in Augusta, Georgia. He's a two-time champion down there. Won it in 1989, then again in 1997. You know, he's trained, some, like we said, he's trained some great horses. And Terry is, uh, you know, he won two legs of the NCHA Triple Crown. He won the Super Stakes one year uh, and won the Derby the same year on a different horse, which is quite a feat. He's finishing up there in this red baldy. Uh, Ten seconds left. This is a good mare here. I'm, I'm not so certain that this might have been this mare's last uh, uh, run here, and I think she's going off into the broodmare band at the McDavid Farm. Great team. And for Terry Riddle, the score there, 202. Not the best of scores, but one way to score big is to pick the right cow. Let's see if Jennifer Reynolds knows the secret. It might look like it, but they don't just randomly ride into the herd and cut out a cow. There's some work that goes on ahead of time. When they bring these cows into the arena for the first time and settle them, give them a chance to get used to their surroundings, the riders get a chance to really get a look at them as well and decide which cows might give them really a shot at that world title. As the herd is being worked, the riders are looking to see which cattle jump or run from the horse too much. They don't want that. They also don't want a cow that doesn't react to the horse at all. So what are they looking for? What is that perfect cow? Generally, they want one that really keeps an eye on the horse, maintains eye contact with the horse, and is hopefully ready to challenge the horse and give him a good go. That is Kent Stowe on WSR looking high. And I'm sure he knows the secrets to picking the right cows, but he's going over with his help just to make sure that everybody's on the right page. Yeah, that, that man standing up in the saddle, that's Tracy Searles. Uh, Tracy's, uh, you know, sure a formidable competitor and, and a great cow picker. And they've got a certain cow that they're going after right now. Uh, you know, now we're in the middle of the herd. Uh, we, we have a good idea what's been cut, but what's acted good. We're going after, I believe, this little black baldy right here. Let's see, yep, there we go. Now this, this cut here, that, that black baldy didn't uh, work like they'd hoped it would. You want to cut a cow standing still, ideally. And when they take off and run like that, it, it's uh, tough to, beat the, uh, to start the run that way. This horse here, uh, you know, the cow, it, when they start running, it's hard for them to get caught up in, in the in center of the pen and stay focused. Um, you know, they want to kind of run to the fence. But here this cow's dialing back in. Ken did a nice job there, just kind of staying patient and waiting on the cow. And, you know, maybe got a plus or two right there at the end of the cow. I think he did. You know, it's very important as a, as a cutting horse rider is to, is to evaluate each cow that you have and try to make the best of it. Uh, if, you know, if you cut a cow like that, don't try to overdo it. Just go in there and, and, and try to stay uh, uh, inside the cow so that you don't have any penalties. That was a better cut right there, too, and this is a better cow. Well, and this cow staying right in the middle of the pen, wow. too, trying to help Ken out. That's right, and then this cow's challenging him. The horse is up to it, getting some good stops there. This is a good, that's a money cow right there. We've seen a few of them today, that's a good money cow. So we had some degree of difficulty there. We had a cow that he was able to keep in the center of the pen, so right. Kent doing a lot of things right on cow number two. That's right, he's managing his, uh, his time well. He's got a little under 40 seconds right here. I'm sure they've got another cow picked out. Uh, and as we've talked about earlier, the management of that time is so crucial. Uh, you don't want to finish up with five or six seconds left. It's, it's not enough time to get a third cow cut. You don't want to cut your third cow with 28 or, or 48 seconds. And they got a little yellow baldy. Now, see there again, you know, he went out there and tried to cut this cow, but, uh, you know, it's running all over, and it, it's just not appealing to the judges. And, uh, you know, it, it just takes away from the run. What he'd built on so hard uh, is uh, removed very quick. 
So that's how it goes in cutting. You, you sail along for two minutes and 10 seconds, and then the last 20 seconds, everything comes unwound. You know, Jeff, you can't stop showing your horse. You've got to show your horse the full two and a half minutes, and you have to judge for the full two and a half minutes. The score, 207. The leader is still lost in headlock. That could change when we come back. Welcome back to Amarillo, Texas, the 2005 NCHA World Finals. Jeff Metters along with Phil Rapp. Lawson Hadlock has the early lead, 220, but with this group of horses, will that hold up? Lawson set a good score to shoot for, but uh, we all know that Boyd Rice is waiting in the wings. Uh, he's going to be crowned world champion tonight. Uh, I think he's going to come gunning for that big score, but uh, you never know. We'll have to sit and watch. But here is Chubby Turner, and he knows how to win an NCHA World Championship. He did it last year on Flick a Cat. He's in the NCHA Hall of Fame, and here he's riding Spratt's Duel and Jewel. You know, I don't think Chubby can come in here and win the World Championship, but I know that Chubby can come in here and, and win a big check tonight. Chubby, uh, as we talk about people turning back and helping, I bet Chubby has turned back for as many people as anybody in the industry. Uh, Chubby's a consummate uh, competitor. Uh, he wants to win, but he also wants the people that he helps to win. Uh, can't say much more about that than that. At this stage of the competition, when you look at the cows and you look at the scores, if you're yet to work, are you encouraged or discouraged? I think you're a little discouraged right now. You know, as we've seen, the, 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 the riders have taken a few chances cutting a cow, uh, and the cattle haven't cooperated. So, you know, if, I, if I'm going down there to show, what I'm thinking about now is let's cut a cow that's uh, maybe not going to give us the biggest score, but not going to take us out of the cutting as well. I'm, I'm shooting for that, uh, you know, 218 to 221 cow, not that 228 cow. How did Chubby do on cow number one? Chubby picked a good cow right there. That little black horn cow was uh, uh, a, a good cow. It gave him a good challenge. It wasn't something that was going to eliminate Chubby from the competition. Uh, Chubby's horse has gone several runs this year. Uh, he's shown her in the open and the novice. His horse has done double duties. Uh, you know, so she's uh, maybe a little bit tired. She's already been shown a little bit this week already, but Chubby made a good cut right here. See how the cow's standing still when Chubby cut it? And now he's giving it a good challenge. This mare's going for it. Uh, great competitor and a great mare right here. It's a little wide right there, but uh, spent a lot of time right in the center of the pen. And oh, that's right. Had to hustle to. That's right. And there's two of the competitors, Donnie O'Brien, and, and uh, we've already seen him cut and Boyd uh, still to show. Uh, they're trying to help Chubby do the best they can. You can see that cow got a little bit testy on him right there. You know, like I said, if, if, I'm, if I'm going down in this herd, I'm going to try to find something that looks a little bit safe. When you chip a cow off, uh, is it fun? <laughs> is it, does it change your game plan? Is, does it mix things up? How, how do you look at that? Well, when you chip a cow, usually when you do that, you, you've, you've got a good run and you're trying to make a, a, a good run better. Or maybe sometimes you're trying to go out there and cover up for something. But, uh, you know, the last couple of seconds of a run, that's the last thing that's in the judge's mind before the buzzer rings. So you want to make sure you do it right. Well, quite a few things went right for Chubby Turner in that run. And one more look here at the 2004 NCHA World Champion. Right, this yellow cow, as we saw, this is a, a tough yellow cow. And it was a good cow for a while. But then this cow just wouldn't give up. It wanted to get back to the herd. And we want these cows to get back, but maybe not challenge us quite so hard. And as Chubby caps his 2005 season, 212 is his score. And there's a former world champion, Mr. Robert Rust, with him. Tim Smith getting set now. You can see him eyeing the herd as he comes in. WR, this cat smart, is the horse. What's going through your mind right here as you kind of kind of stroll in and the clock started and it's time to pick your cow? Well, uh, Tim, uh, you know, here's another person that, that doesn't have the opportunity to be the world champion, but he's got the opportunity maybe to win the finals here tonight. And what Tim, what's going through Tim's mind now is to cut three good cattle. Uh, this is an exceptional stallion that he has, but he wants to cut three cows that it, that's going to give him a good challenge so he can get a score and try to be the finals champion. Uh, and he found a good little black blaze cow right here and watch him work. You know, it's a good horse. He's nailing those stops hard. This horse has a lot of eye appeal. Looking pretty good. Nose to nose with this cow. This is what it's all about right here, folks. See how perfect that horse is with that? He hasn't put a foot out of place. Good challenge. You know, when you when you watch this, what a great first cow right there for, 
oh. for Tim Smith. But, you know, you get kind of caught up in that battle between the horse and the cow. But if you watch the horse, you know, I mean, he's doing so much. He's stopping. He's turning back. He's using quickness. You know, the cow sense. So much goes into a great cutting horse. Oh, it, it really does. Uh, and this horse has a great family. He's, he's sired by Highbrow Cat, you know, which was one of the uh, – all-time leading sires. His mother's one of the great producers of our business right now. Uh, she's a mare that's owned by the Strong Valley Ranch, and she's just produced every time she's been uh, uh, mated with. This horse is a, a full brother to the NCHA fraternity champion that Craig Morris had rode uh, a few years ago. Just a great family, and this is one of the greatest showmen that, uh, that the business has ever seen with Mr. Tim Smith, and he's a dear friend of mine, and uh, he is uh, a consummate showman. Uh, and he can catch ride, he can train, he can show, he can do it all. Well, he can, and he can pick some cows because he's oh, yeah. picked two right here that have really laid a good foundation for what could be a change at the top of the leaderboard. I know. He, he's testing it right now. Now you've got 23, 24 seconds, and I know Tim's thinking uh, if we finish up strong right here, we're going to test that, uh, that score of 220, and that's what Tim's looking for right now. He found this little black cow with some manure on its side, and... Uh, He's going to go for it. He's got 10 seconds. He's going to finish it up strong. Look at the eye appeal. Look at how correct, but yet look at how effortless this horse makes it look. Owned by Wagon Hound Land and Livestock, and this is a horse that you would love to have in your barn. And that was some kind of run right there by Tim Smith. Great look here at WR, this cat's smart. What an outstanding horse. He really is. He is he's just an exceptional horse. And the, and the owner of this horse, uh, uh, is also a part owner of the Boston Red Sox. So, uh, you know, we have quite a diversified uh, ownership field in the, in the cutting horse world as well. WR, this cat's smart. Tim Smith, they take the lead with a 222. Rio CD and Lawson Hadlock bumping out of second place at 220. But this thing is far from over. Boyd Rice and Bob Hickory Rio ready to crown a championship season when we come back. Glad you're with us in Amarillo, Texas, the NCHA World Finals. Jeff Metters along with Phil Rapp. That's Jeremy Barwick on Dual Ray Me. High expectations for these pairs. The horse's career earnings, 361,000, 425,000 for Jeremy. Great horse, great, great rider. This is a great team. This horse last year, 2005, very busy year. He had a stellar aged event career. I think he won the uh, Open. Uh, five and six-year-old at the Super Stakes. He was second in the five and six-year-old of the, of the Classic Challenge. He was shown in the youth by the world champion youth rider, uh, Miss Milner. His horse was shown by Jeremy's wife, Candace, in the non-pro. She won the non-pro Classic Challenge. Uh, just a great horse. This is, this is the epitome of what an American Quarter Horse is right here, the, the longevity and the, and the durability of this horse. And dual Ray me off to a good start with that first cow. and. Uh... A little bit of trouble here getting this second cow to cooperate. Yeah, you can just see this cow. This is one of those numb cows we were talking about that does not have any honor right there. And uh, that cow just, you never know until you cut him. I'm sure that cow looked really good to Jeremy when he was uh, picking him out, but uh, that cow just eliminated him right there. Great team, great horse, great rider. Sometimes it just doesn't go, uh, go as well as they planned. It's one of the most uncooperative cows I believe I've ever seen. <laughs> it was that. Here's a great cow now, and Jeremy's just going to try to finish up. And on the right. problem now, 55 seconds, and that's a, that's a lively cow to stay on that long. It has. This guy's uh, won a lot of that $300,000 plus uh, dollars working cattle, 30, 40 seconds on that last cow, and that's where he's garnered a lot of his uh, scores before. You know, and you think about timing, and it, it's you get a little bit out of sync in your run, and, and it just leads to problems down the road. And you can see that here with this third cow. Yeah, and, and it leads to some fatigue. You know, the horse obviously is not going to be quite as sharp on the, uh, the third cow, sometimes with the fatigue factor, and that's why we try to continually, uh, you know, keep a good uh, feed program and keep the horses in, in tip-top shape so they can go a full two and a half minutes. Uh, but this horse has done it several times. This old gray cow's just played out. There's not much more he can do. But look at that horse. He's not going to let him go. He's going to fight to the bitter end. Uh, last 55 seconds probably seemed like an eternity. And Jeremy Barwick, dual Ray Me, they have some problems. Not the best of scores. 185, and that gets us to Keith Barnett. And Keith will be riding Tassus Aristocat. This is a horse that he also owns. Yeah. And here's another legend. You know, we, we met Terry Riddle earlier this evening. Uh, you know, Keith Barnett, uh, just a legend. He's several time NCHA fraternity finalist, trained several great horses, he's trained several great horse trainers. 
Um, but Keith, uh, never count him out of the cut either. Uh, I watched Keith win a, uh, an Open not too long ago in Weatherford, Texas, where all the big boys are. Went in there, marked 77 on this horse. So we could see some great things from him tonight. Has that first cow picked out? Keith, I think he comes from Brenham, Texas. He knows how to how to hold a feisty cow down there. And this is a good black cow right here. Cow's giving him a good challenge, a good horse, good stopper. Cow's kind of playing out now a little bit. Just stop right there. You know, you got to take it when you can get off. You got to take it when you can. Keith, over a million dollars in his career. And I see him pretty relaxed right there as he kind of digs in, talking to his help, trying to decide on cow number two. That's right. You know, and I don't know how old Keith is, but I know he's made the fraternity finals back in the late 60s. And uh, so he's seen this cutting change several times. And, uh, and it's great to see Keith uh, as competitive as he is today. And, and uh, you know, that's a great thing about cutting. You can have, uh, you know, the youth that are 12, 13 years old. And then you can see that, uh, you know, our veterans in here that are still competitive and can still do it uh, as good as anybody. He's watched the first place check at the NCHA Futurity Climb over those years. Obviously, the marquee event doesn't stay with cow number two very long. No, that cow played out. And, and uh, you know, now we're getting deep into the herd and, and the cattle that, you know, the good cattle have been cut already. And so you're kind of back to potluck. Uh, you're trying to make a good choice, but uh, that cow wasn't what Keith wanted. Well, 30 seconds on the clock, so you can expect him to be pretty patient right here as he decides on that final cow. And as we talked earlier, what you're trying to do here, Jeff, is, is you, want, you want to make a, a, a cut that's not going to uh, take any more uh, score away from you. You want to stay uh, away from the penalties. And, uh, you know, right here, Keith's made a good, wise cut right here. 13 seconds, things should finish up well for him. Good quick move right there. One of the legends in the game, Keith Barnett on Tassus Aristocrat, wrapping up his go. And the score for Keith, 214. That puts him right in the middle of the pack. Still to come here in Amarillo, Boyd Rice and Bob's Hickory Rio. The champs are on deck. Back in Amarillo, Texas, Horse TV's coverage of the 2005 NCHA World Finals. Jeff Metters along with Phil Rapp, and that is Bob's Hickory Rio right there. Lloyd Rice on board. They do well in this round. They have a chance to go over $100,000 for the year and wrap up that NCHA World Championship. And Phil, kind of a sentimental story here. James Kenny, the owner of this horse, passed away just before the competition here. And, and Boyd, not wasting any time. He's getting right to it. Uh, Boyd's focused tonight. I mean, he wants this bad. He knows he's already world champion, but he wants to cap the year off with a grand finale. And Boyd's focused. He's like that quarterback, Joe Montana, going in there and driving down there for that last run. Here he goes. This is a great horse, great team. Uh, you know, they've been all over the United States. Uh, you know, and they're, they're the meaning of a world champion. You watch this horse. You know, he's dead on a cow, big stops, bright. Look at how crisp that, crisp that horse is. And uh, he was aggressive. He told those judges, hey, boys, I'm here tonight to win. And what a great first cow. We'll see if he can build on that now with cow number two. Yeah. That's the kind of start you want. That could lead to something big and going to need it. 222, Tim Smith, they have the lead. When you're judging, you want to see, you want to see aggression uh, in a good, positive way. You want to see somebody aggressive down there. You want to say, hey, come show me your horse. I want to see what you can do. And that's what Boyd's doing. He's got three cows in mind that he's going to cut, and he's going in to cut them. He's going to cut, I believe he's going to cut this little gray cow right here. And uh, like we said, th this guy's focused. He wants to cap it off. The crowd's in here. Everybody wants to see the world champion, and when you've shown this, this horse as much as Boyd has, you've got all the confidence in the world of this horse. Well, he kind of hit, hit the nail on the head right there. You spent the entire year with him. You know when he's going to zig, you know when he's going to zag, and that is showing up in each of these first two cows. Yeah, and this is a true team. I mean, Boyd knows what this horse is going to do. The horse knows what Boyd's going to do. And horses, these are intelligent animals. And that was a great second cow. We're going to see how it caps it off. Boyd's, you know, taking a deep breath. He wants to finish it off, but this horse, he's like, come on, give me a chance. I want to go out there and shine. He's coming with this black headlight cow right there. There you go, 25 seconds. Let's see what he can do. I mean, it, this doesn't get much better than this, folks, right here. That horse, bright, accurate. Boyd's kicking for all he's got right here. The final think, 10 seconds of his season. Yeah. 
I think Mr. Kenny's up there riding with him tonight, and I know the man that trained this horse, John Adcrease, he's up there with him too. And waiting after that buzzer, an NCHA World Championship for Boyd Rice and Bob's Hickory Rio. And all three cows, spectacular Oh, for look Boyd. at that. Look at the horse. He, you know, his ears are so bright and uh, just accurate on that cow. He's challenging that cow. You know, and right here, he's just doing it right. He's laying down, stopping. Folks, just, this is what you want to see right here. This is your world champion, $102,000. Outstanding. It was as easy as one, two, three. All three cows, absolutely perfect. And what a score, 227. They have the lead in the final round. But Don Crumpler could spoil the party. We'll see what happens when we come back. Glad you're with us in Amarillo, Texas. Final rider at the 2005 NCHA World Finals. This is Don Crumpler on Woody Be Lucky. This is a really a great gilding. Uh, uh, some good people, Don and Karen Hansen, own this uh, this horse. They, they've got two places in Weatherford and, and a place in uh, in Idaho. Don Crumpler comes from a great ranching family. They, they run a lot of wheat and a lot of wheat cattle up there in the Wichita Falls area. And a great team. Don trained this horse. Karen Hansen, his owner, shows the horse and the non-pro. And boy, he did find a good cow here last in there to go find a good black baldy like that. Well, that's pretty outstanding. Big stops, a lot of eye appeal, folks. Well, this is a good credit earning run right here. And we talked about going first, blessing or curse, going last. Uh, is that, is that a I, I'd rather or curse? be last than first, but uh, you know, somewhere in the middle is better. But solid first cow here for Don, and real solid. What a tough, what a tough act to follow that 227 oh, from Boyd it Rice. It is, but uh, you know what? Uh, everybody in this uh, this finals tonight, they're competitors. They're they're not uh, uh, a bit with that 227. You know, he's going out there to beat that 227, and he's going to try to do it. Uh, you know, he's got the the reins pitched to this horse. You can see how much slacker's in the reins, and that's good. That's a credit earning uh, situation. He's being aggressive with his cuts, but he's cutting the cows clean. Here he goes. Look at this horse. This, this horse is on the money tonight. Look at that crouch. Look at that breaking of the knees. That's eye, eye appeal, folks. Yeah, big stop. Pretty darn nice run. That's one of those things that make these aged events so fun. You, you go to the Futurity, they're younger horses, a little greener. They're the stars of tomorrow. But when you come to an event like this, you know, you're seeing veteran horses that very seldom make mistakes, and that's where you see the really big scores. Oh, that's exactly right. But this horse, he's six years old here. He's still got another uh, age event uh, year left, but uh, he's been shown, uh, and, and he has a mentality of an older horse. I, I tell you what, he's challenging Boyd right now. I don't know if he's going to get that 227, but he's making a good run for the, for the big money right now. Made a good, strong, aggressive third cut. He's got 17 seconds. I'm liking this run right now. Really, boy, nailing those stops hard. This is the way you want to see it right here, folks. Seen a couple of really good runs. Here's one right now. I'm liking it. Pretty darn good run. Yeah. Trying to challenge Boyd Rice right there. Another run with three very solid cows, and Don Crumpler could change things a little bit in this final round. He can change it. He, he's made, uh, I don't know if he's going to get that 227, but uh, he might move that second place rider. And that's exactly what he does. 224 is the score for Woody B. Lucky and Don Crumpler. But what a night for Boyd Rice and Bob's Hickory Rio. They cap off their season with a 227. They win the final round. Total earnings for the year over $102,000. Jennifer is with our new NCHA world champion. I was wound up. I was ready to go, you know, and I knew he had, he, he shows every time when it comes time for the for the big Big run, he'll do it every time for me, every time I ask him. And, uh, it just I happened to cut the good cattle and it worked out. It's you know, always something else, I guess, to win a world championship, but then for, to win it for Mr. Kenny made it even that much more special, you know. Very good deal. Congratulations to Boyd Rice and Bob Tickery Rio as they win the NCHA Open World Championship. A sentimental story with a Cinderella ending. For Phil Rapp, I'm Jeff Metters. Thanks for joining us in Amarillo, Texas.